And now it is time to begin the build. Now I always get myself in trouble by starting to put stuff together without doing like a dry fit up and then wires are in the way and I complain that the frame is badly designed when really I just didn't think ahead and uh, apologies for that. <laughs> so this time I'm going to start by doing some freaking fit up in this frame. The fit up is not that darn complicated. It's just some standoffs, but there you go. You can. I'm going to make sure that my wires will run where I need them to run. Nothing will be in the way. Now that I've got the standoffs installed, I can show you how this fits down on. So you got your flight controller and you know, all that stuff in your stack. And then this TPU printed part just slides down on top like so. And I don't really know what holds it on there. <laughs> just friction? I guess just friction. I don't really know about it. Maybe you've got a strap or something. I'll look into that. <laughs> um, everything fits in there. Uh, one of the complaints that I've heard about this frame, and we'll see if it's true, is that because you don't have any plate on top here, that in, in bad crashes, the TPU will flex and give, and these standoffs will get bent. Some people have suggested that if you put longer screws through, that it fixes that, but I don't really see how that's going to be the case. Um, it's not that the standoff is bending, it's that the screw itself is bending, and the longer screw, I don't, unless you're stripping them out, I don't think that's going to really help. We'll see if that bears out, just something I heard. Here's the screws that came with it, and if I push the screw through the arm, you can see that there are not very many threads going through. Don't let that worry you. That is enough threads. That's about as much as you want. Think about the fact that the motor base itself is only so thick, right? So I, after you're more than a millimeter or so in, you're not going to be grabbing any more threads anyway. So any excess length is just something to get in the way. You don't want the screws to go through so far that they touch the motor windings and damage them and short them. That being said, it does look like we have a little bit of slack there. Looks like we got a little bit of room there between the uh, between the windings and the base. So if you wanted to use slightly longer screws, maybe just a half a millimeter more perhaps or a millimeter, you probably could get away with it. So if I take this longer screw and I put it through and I just hold the motor here, you can see that it is just short enough that it will fit in here and it will not touch the windings but it's getting awfully close isn't it there's not a lot of clearance there so yeah there you go oh, see yeah it, it rubs so you definitely would want to think twice about using a screw this long because it might could get up in there if we take a look right here you can see maybe I'm not sure it'll come out in the video but you can see that the screw head is just flush with the top of the motor base so those screws are just long enough that they almost get all the way through the motor base. Uh, it might feel a little bit better if they protruded just a little bit above. And I certainly, if I was going to use any kind of washer or anything like that under here, I would use a longer screw. The, um, the frame that came from Shendrones has these screws with it. They are slightly longer and would protrude through more. I'm not going to use them because I feel like these other screws are in there tight enough that they're not going to back out. If I really cared, I could use Loctite, um, but uh, these are kind of button head screws, and I actually prefer the this style of screw head for motor screws because I think the larger two and a half millimeter um, two and a half millimeter size is easier to get in there, and I don't think it strips as easily. Now we'll install the ESCs, and uh, I'm going to use these metal screws. Uh, they're just going to go up through the bottom of the base plate, and the whole thing is going to go on there. I can see that this probably is not going to be tall enough. It's a shame. I'll have to figure something out. I'm sure I will. Uh, there's some debate as to whether metal screws or nylon screws are better to use here. Uh, the advantage of nylon screws is that they don't transmit shock to the boards as readily. The advantage of steel screws is that they're stronger and they don't shear off. A lot of times in a very bad crash, you will break a nylon standoff or a nylon screw, and then your flight controller will be flapping in the wind. Uh, the flip side is that every time this frame flexes, and it will flex even though it's 4 millimeter carbon, uh, it's gonna, these steel screws are going to transmit stresses into the boards and make them more likely to break. I don't think there's a right answer there, uh, but just certainly something to think about. I'm going to take some uh, nuts and I'm going to just put them on here, and this will act as a standoff for the bottom board, and it'll also hold the nut, uh, screws into place so they don't fall out while I'm working. I'm working off of an assortment of 
uh, stand, these M3 standoffs, you can order this. I ordered it off of Amazon. Just M3 standoff assortment. I don't know. Just use your use your Google Foo and find it. Uh, and I, you can see I've gone through a lot more of some than others. I don't use these great big long standoffs very much. But um, certainly something worth having. And it's not too expensive even if you only use if you only use half of them before you order the next set because you've run out of the ones you actually want. It's probably cheaper to order them in bulk, but for the vast majority of people, if you just order an assortment like that, it'll take you a while to go through it. Unless you're somebody like Boba Fett or me who does a ton of builds. Uh, fortunately, the spacing of the ESC holes is drilled correctly. You'll see some of these boards come from the factory instead of 30.5 millimeter spacing on the holes, they'll have 30 millimeter spacing and then they'll go on really tight. If you're not using nylon standoffs or something that has a little bit of flex, it will not work. I'm just going to verify here on the bottom that I see that there's no contact or no danger of contact between any components or anything like that. I just want to see light through there, uh, make sure I've given it enough spacing that it's going to uh, kind of not contact the frame. And I have. Before I start digging in here, I'm going to think a little bit about how this is all going to go together. So if I decide to go with the ROSD, I can put it on top here and I could wire the main battery lead here and then I could take a jumper from here down to there. Yeah, that would work. Oh, I got, a, got one on the bottom. Maybe I could... See, what I don't want to do is I could take a very short length of wire and just bridge downwards, right? Just straight from the bottom of the board and go down. But the problem is then if I ever needed to work on it, it would be hard to get this out of the way if I never needed to work on the ESC. So I don't want to do that. I want to do something that gives me a little bit of flex. The other thing I want to think about is how this stack is going to shape up when I've got the flight controller on top. And I think we're going to be okay there. We'll have plenty of room. Yeah. See, that's way more space than we really need. And it doesn't leave very many threads for the standoffs to go that are going to hold the flight controller. So I don't like that approach. This isn't going to work because this is too tall. But I'm hoping that two, two nuts is going to be... Yeah, it is. Those standoffs are a little more than three nuts heights tall. So if I put these nuts on, if I do two nuts, I'll get just a little bit less spacing. If you use a wrench like this on these nylon uh, nuts, go really gentle because it's really easy to strip them if you have any kind of leverage at all. I guess what I'm saying is be gentle on your nuts. We'll see if that makes the final edit. So now we've got two nuts on here, and that should be a little bit better height for the ROSD. Yeah, it gives us just a little more thread than to get like a standoff on, like, like this, something like that, to, uh, to hold the revolt.
Just checking the fit up of these wires. They are just long enough, not really very long at all, I mean, much slack at all, um, just long enough to reach. So I'm not going to cut them any shorter because I don't want to get myself in trouble like I have done in the past. I'm just going to tin them as is and wire them up. And if I've got a little bit of extra slack, then I'll figure out where to stick it. Another thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try and give them a little bit of a bend so that when I put them on, they'll kind of bend downward instead of sticking out. And I think that'll, I don't know, I just like that idea. See, there's a lot of slack there, but I'm hesitant to shorten this up because I don't want to leave myself in a situation where I don't have the wire if I want it. Well, I guess I'm going to shorten it up. This is it, folks. This is where I screwed up the build. And they're all soldered up. I'll give you a closer look at how that's gone. Uh, I always just solder them straight and then use BLLE Suite to reverse the directions as need be after they're built. Some people don't like to do that because they've heard that there's bug in BLLE Suite or BLLE that causes the copter to drop out of the air sometimes if you use motor reversing in BLLE. That is only like two ESCs that I'm aware of that have that problem. Uh, I think the D DYS XM30 and one other, anyway, it's not a general problem and you don't need to worry about it. I use software reversing on all my copters. I haven't had any problems with them dropping out of the air yet.